next guest takes on Colin Huckbody coming up here at LFA 38 on April 27th. It is Bavon Lewis joining me here on the program for the very first time. Bavon, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm doing very well, man. It's good to talk to you. And uh, it's been a while since we've seen you in the cage. Of course, you uh, won uh, way back uh, last July on Contender Series. So I think a lot of people want to know uh, why haven't you fought? Well, um, you know, after the Contender Series, the UFC wasn't too sure. I mean, you know, whatever goes on, but they weren't too sure about, you know, bringing me into the UFC, but they wanted to help me because they felt that I was a good talent and they wanted to see me grow, of course. So um, it was still like, um, I don't want to call it negotiations, but, you know, a lot of uh, things had to be talked about before there was even, you know, signing on any dotted line. So it was some of that, you know, kept me out, you know, and then another other few things, you know, nothing that, uh, Nothing drastic or anything like that. Nothing. I didn't even feel like I was out. You know, I was taking the time to actually train and learn. So, you know, you look at it as point of view. You know, still good. Yeah, because you were given a development deal, which is interesting because I don't think anyone else on that uh, contender series got a contract like that. So, I mean, at least at least you had the time to kind of get ready and you know for for any opportunities that did come up. Right. You know, I didn't feel like I, I need to jump into anything right away. You know, I, I I do love to fight and I like to go go go. But I sort of, you know, at the same time, you. Know, you got to look at it as a business approach, you know, and it, I don't really even, I don't even like the business approach, but it's something to learn. And, uh, I didn't feel like I had to jump back in. I just want to take my time, see the options and also grow as a martial artist, you know, to get a better performance for the next fight. Absolutely. And your last fight was great, man. Uh, you get the uh, TKO victory over Elias Urbina, who's uh, on the ultimate fighter at Dana White's contender series five. I got to know how happy were you with your performance in that fight, especially getting the finish, man. I was happy for the finish. You know, the, the funny thing is when I, before him, I saw guys and I was saying, oh, this is what I'll do to him and we'll have a good fight. And with him, I was, I was sort of trying to say that, but truthfully, I didn't see it going past, you know, I couldn't see, I couldn't see a real game plan. So I knew the fight was going to be different. I knew I have, uh, I grew since my last performance and I was in better shape and just, you know, good all around. I felt, I didn't even know what to expect. I just knew I was going to do good. Uh, of course I had a, couple scrapes and bumps but it was welcomed you know excellent and um now you're back with lfa i mean could this be the best scenario right now just fighting for lfa because we know you know if you want to get in the ufc you fight for lfa it seems like we've seen so many guys get signed there right i've seen that uh eric anders uh oh roberto uh, sanchez ricky simone yeah. uh who else <laughs> you know marcus perez the list goes on there's a lot of guys in yeah. the ufc from lfa yeah and i would like to get on there uh, i did the contender series and i like that so the stages are different, but at the same time, it still means the same amount. It still means the same amount. You still, you know, put in the same work, and you still expect to finish. No, for sure. Well, let's talk about your opponent here, Colin Huckbody. He's got the three and one record. How do you feel like you match up against him? Yeah, well, as far as uh, pro experience, we definitely we have you know same amount of fights, but I mean, fight experience. I I feel I'm a vet. You know, you could take that as, you know, anyone can hear a vet and you feel, oh, you know, he's just old. And no, I actually fought for a long time, been in the cage enough times. Uh, I've been in tough spots. I had grinding matches. I didn't take a lot of damage. So at the end of the day, now that I'm at, I feel that I'm at Jackson Wink, I feel, you know, the fights, you know, I'm getting a little bit older, more mature, but the fights are getting to where I don't want it to, to I don't want to have to do that anymore. So you know, putting them away or stop, you know, thinking of a good stoppage to, you know, it's, I've grown, you know, I've just grown so much. So I got off track, but no, no, no worries. No, no. I, I know exactly what you're saying. And, and, you know, I kind of agree with you on the experience thing because, you know, doing the contender series, that's an experience in itself. Just, you know, being in that high pressure situation, you got Dana White, you know, cage side. So I can understand, uh, you know, having that experience and bringing it into this fight, which is great. You mentioned being at Jackson Wink though. Uh, how has that been uh, getting to train with some really high level fighters? Man, it's just living a dream, and it's always a test. I believe I said uh, I, compa- I compare- compared it to uh, the NFL combine. You know, you go in there, and it's just you're going to have a different group of people. You know, it's going to have different mindsets. You're going to see where you where you excel and where you need to grow. And then, and then and mental warfare, too. You know, I go in there with a certain type of nerve, almost similar to a fight sometimes, you know. But, you know, just all around good work and then the great coaching, you know. How's the weight cut going ahead of this matchup, getting down to 185? So, in the past, I used to fight at 170. That's when my career started. And uh, the weight cut was easy up until 
you know, 20s, 21. And I decided to go up a weight class. I went up a weight class, but still, I mean, not even still, I didn't have a hard cut anymore. It was more, more or less walking around weight. You know, two, I like to call it two spits in a poop, but weight cut is not an issue. I like to think of no weight cut. I can focus more on technique and uh, conditioning. Okay. That's good. Always good to hear in that. Uh, how do you see this fight unfolding on April 27th? Well, honestly, I already put it out there. I, I got to give Colin Huck body a challenge. I mean, I'm sure he's looking for a challenge. He had a couple nice finishes. So I'm just coming at him. It's going to be me coming at him the way I feel. But I put it in the air already. I'm coming after him in the first 30 seconds. And uh, let's go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what kind of let's see what kind of fight this is. I mean, I'm I'm actually interested to see how it goes. So let's go. You know, good stuff, man. Uh, what's next for you after this? I mean, has the UFC kind of given you an indication if you get a finish here that you might get signed, or you kind of just seeing what happens with LFA? I'm sort of seeing what happened with LF, LFA. Uh, I'm optimistic, of course. You know, even look, a contender series, I figured uh, at three and zero, maybe I won't get in the UFC. But you get a knockout, I'm like, ooh, you know. It looked pretty good. Uh, you know, Daniel White might like that. You never know. It's a phone call. They might even do something last minute. You know, as long as my name is in the mix, I'm good with that. But for this LA, LFA fight, I'm trying to get in the You know, I'm in the mix already. But for this LA fight, you know, I'm trying to get on that, that list. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get in the door right now. It's it's the 2018 is the year that I feel is, man, actually it's just this moment right now. So. Okay, I like it. Because I was going to say, LFA is a pretty deep middleweight division. If you look at some of the guys they have there, they've got the interim title fight happening, uh, you know, uh, coming up here soon. And then they also have uh, the champ, Anthony Hernandez. There's Brendan Allen. I mean, it's it's really a stacked division for 85. I, uh, no doubt, man. I feel like we all going to be in the UFC. So if we don't fight now, we'll fight later. And if I never see him in the ring, it'll be that too. You know, there's always going to be some other people too. So um, as far as those other guys... Yeah, I I want to fight. If we're gonna fight, we might as well just go go ahead and do it in the UFC. You know. Yeah. No. No. I hear. You. I I totally hear. You this on that. is the time. This is definitely the year. Um, as far as uh, downtime, uh, you know, being at, at Jackson Wink, do, do you do you watch any Netflix? You playing any video games? What do I find you doing outside of uh, training and everything? You can find me riding my bike. Oh yeah, uh, nice. You can find me riding my bike. I got a nice little electric bike when um after a few wins actually. It helped me get around Albuquerque. Albuquerque is pretty small, but it's real good with the with the bike community. So you can catch me riding my bike. Um, man, honestly, I just I like to have fun. You know, um, when it comes down to it, I like to hang out with my main people, and we definitely compliment each other when we go out. So you know, I like to have fun. Definitely, uh, you can see me even playing some basketball, maybe. <laughs> Nice. Okay. That's good. Getting a little hoops in. That's good. Who who would you say you're uh, closest with at Jackson's? I know uh, it's a big gym, but uh, obviously you sort of develop some friendships when you're down there. Definitely. Um, I def- well, the coach is definitely the, is the strongest relationship. And also I have a, a younger brother. I'm always going to say whether we're in Jackson's or in another place, strong relation with him. That's my partner. That's my best partner, Levon Lewis, over here. Actually just had his uh, pro debut not even a month ago, maybe. Yeah, so look out for that kid. Um, so it's him, but definitely the coaches are strong as relationships. But, um, man, when it comes down to training, everyone is, you know, they look out for each other. Everyone looks out for one another. So I can't even put that all on one, uh, one you know, one specific person. But definitely a lot of good guys to look out for at Jackson Wing in all weight classes. Awesome. Well, this is going to be an awesome fight. I can't wait. It's coming up here. LFA 38 live on Access TV on April 27th. Uh, Vaughn, it was uh, great getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just uh, remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, man, the floor is yours. All right. So you can find me at, oh, on Instagram at B-V-O-N-K-L. I like to, some people call it Bovonkel, but Bovonkel. <laughs> but you find that on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter at L Uh you know, I'll start getting more active on that once, you know, everything gets popping. Um, Facebook is just my name, first name, last name, but Ron Lewis, no specific uh, fan site yet, but we'll get there. Also, man, there's a lot of great people that help me out for this camp and just throughout life and, um, you know, getting to me where I am. It's my pops, my mother, 
my father, the great, co the great staff and coaches at Jackson Wink, and my boys back in Atlanta, man.